Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it so very, very much. So I've just wanted to come on and jump on and speak about something that really got to me. I was discussing something with Abigail this morning and it was about this video that is going around. And I haven't found that specific one because in this video, this boy actually, you know, you can see that he's being tortured like a mouse. Um before his death and you've got these sides to this war uh, that is so ridiculous with amongst the people that, that have such vitriol for one side or the other and the, the, the victims yet again are the boys and men and women that are told that it is a proud profession it is it is a it is a great thing and you'll be honored and you'll be and that's all a lie because we see the veterans on the other side of that journey and they're left to God and good neighbors. So I wanted to show you because I spoke a while ago about again, and we're looping around to things coming about now in that I saw it a while ago and spoke a while ago about um, the fact that I saw them utilizing children's gaming and encouraging children's gaming. I need to take that off there one second. Um, children's gaming so that they could um, hone in on skills with drones and these kids are accurate they're good my kids are and the videos games are so real um, and so combative a lot of them that they uh, they encourage this behavior and in that child's mind as they've been growing up our young soldiers now particularly the men have been conditioned to see even less reverence of life because they can literally sit with a foot warmer on their feet if need be and, and play a game, a game with deadly consequences for those on the other end. That gaming mentality mixed with the um, military mind swiping and, and mind control through the training program that child's mind goes back to that safe place, the, uh, the the reflective memories of aiming and shooting and all of those things. And we've got these young soldiers that are seeing even less reverence for life, feeling even less reverence for life, because it literally feels the same way that it did while they were sitting in a chair in the bedroom or in the living room playing a game. So I'm just sharing the screen here because I haven't found the exact video that... Um, Abby shared with me because it, it was graphic uh, and horrific. And this one is just the same, but you know, it's not as so, if I can say that. Um, the final consequence for the person on the other end of it, it I suppose it's just as much uh, traumatic. So trigger warning. Um, and I'm sharing this just for speaking purposes, discussion purposes. So you can see here, there's this soldier that gone. And you can see how how accurate that that aim was to go around and in. And it looks like a computer screen. It looks like a lot of the screens that I've seen on the games. Um, and it speaks of so many videos like that that look, they look like they look like video games. That could be a video game. Um with the drones in particular, you see here, when soldiers were soldier to soldier, both of them would have gone through trenches, drained through mud, gone through rain, gone through sun to get there. They've, they've had, there's, there's a extra expense to going on head to head. This new way of war that is so detached and that it is creating a supremacy in our military services of these drone players are sitting in luxury comparatively. They haven't even had to put the effort in or be broken down by trenching through the mud, hearing the sounds really loud in their ear to make them have that future PTSD. They haven't even had to go to that expense, that personal expense. So how much easier again is it to encourage these minds to connect and continue playing the game? The more they do it, the more depravity that they reach, the more um, 
desperation and, and pain they put upon peoples and their families. Um, the more that they do that, the more that the mind will dig in because that's a heck of a lot of inner work to be un unraveled. Because if those consequences, if the mind then allowed those consequences to become real and reconnect, like re-plug in the, the human, you know, and switch off the drone inside, that's, that's a lot to deal with. That is pain beyond measure in shadow work. And so it stands to reason that you're going to dig in even deeper to the lie that you're told to say that, don't worry, you might have killed hundreds or you might have just killed one, but you've saved millions. You know, well done. Here's a medal. As soon as you're out of here, we're going to forget about you. We've really got to be ready to let go of everything. Now, I know it's a really great feeling. I'm so proud of my granddad for being a soldier. I'm not proud of him for being in the war. I'm proud of his actions that he did when he found himself in that position to save others. But I'm not proud of, of the role that he filled, uh, that, that has been created by these powers that be to keep us fighting amongst ourselves while we get weakened and, and their banknotes keep rolling in. The laundry business gets real good at wartime. And so... It saddens me that that we still, just like religion, there sh we should be much further ahead, I feel, in ready to let go, take on the stories, take on the esoteric knowledge, but not be fixed and say that that's the way it is and that's the only way it is, as is organised religion. The same way with the military. The military is a religion. You're not allowed to say anything um, bad about it because those soldiers sacrificed themselves and stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, the hearts that did that with the intent that most of them did that with, I can truly connect with and be so grateful for and, and give love and peace and balance and wholeness to and have pride in them because they're of their intent not because of the role that was built for them, to break them, using them as a conduit to break others. It worries me that this new cycle of war is even more detached than both soldiers having to trench through all weathers, all, all obstacles to get to the one-on-one -on -one in the first place. With these drones, the comfortability uh, makes it even less real. The body has gone through no trauma to get there. There's been no personal expense other than the inner child being very connected to the thumb movements and the trigger movements that they've been brought up doing. They're so intuitive and quick at it. I text and it takes me ages. It, it, I usually write things out, take a picture, send, because it, I find that easier. The boys are like this on anything electronic because they they, they know with that with that, um, what do you call it, controller, it's it's a part of their nervous system that they, they know exactly where to go and what to do and what button to press to have this action. I see it in the future that it will come out that actually there have been some dark wars where children have been taking actions in what they think are games that have had real consequences somehow some way that stops the tracking for people for a while but I know that that's going to come up in the future and it really does um, frighten me the comfortability that they are giving these soldiers behind these drones and the lack of empathy this video that really upset me was of a boy um, a boy uh, that had had a leg blown off had a tourniquet on um, and they kept dropping, the Ukrainian soldiers kept dropping um, grenade-like things, not right on him, which they could have done, uh, but beside him. And at one point, Abigail says, you see this boy just playing with the grass and hopefully taking himself to a place in his, in his inner world of peace before his ending. But they didn't allow that to happen either. 
they kept doing it at either side of him, making him move, making him come back to this present horrific moment where he was like a mouse and cats were above him, tossing him back and forth. That irreverence for life, that detachment for life is a frightening breed. It's nothing to be proud of. It's nothing to be happy about. It's something to really fear and make sure we do something about it. Because this breed of soldier, talk about super soldier, this breed of human, this conditioned breed of human is one of the most and will be one of the most dangerous things towards humanity over the next coming years. I keep hearing in the movement, oh, the soldiers obeyed our aid, they're like us. These people are more conditioned and more mind-based control, trauma-based control um, peoples than anyone else. They've had it broken into them. They've had it pulled out of them. They've had it packed and unpacked and repacked and unpacked, right down to the bed ritual that they have. It is, it, they are machines. And for a lot of them, that makes them do extraordinary things. But this breed of soldier, with this level of comfortability and a lack of consequence in the face-to-face -face battle combat, um, is a frightening breed. So just be aware of that. Um, even even if whatever you think of the war, if you if you're still on a side. All look to you, but at the end of the day, in war, should there not be this honor that you speak of, this this great honor that you that you wish? Because all of the soldiers with good hearts that I've met and known and been brought up by, um, they never found pride in the torture, in the pain that by their hand others felt, because it was very real. It was one on one. It was, it was you know, being in a racket, the old plane, while the bombs were. You're hearing the noise yourself, even if you dropped the bomb. This is too detached. Comfortability, I found, especially the comfortability we've been conditioned to have, is one of the most dangerous places we entered into as a collective. This comfortability that that just breeds. Um, contempt for life, uh, finding life an annoyance and just bombing it out the way is uh, it's rapidly increasing and it's everywhere. It, 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 it is a religion that has grown right under us and we've kept cheering it on like we cheer on the NHS um, and it's bullshit. It, I call bullshit on it and I, I hate that even these soldiers that are doing that, I cast no hate towards them. I really dislike the fact that they're going, they've got those types of inner wounds and the distorted beings that that, that while they still take pleasure in that, that they're becoming. It, it's a good life wasted to me. So much love, balance and wholeness. Make of it what you will. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah.